Good afternoon. My name is Ijema Oboko. I'm a business lecturer at Scholar School System, like you know. And today I'll be looking at one of our modules, which is Fundamentals of Marketing. And I'll be sharing my screen with you. Please, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me at ijemaaskolarschool.ac.uk. So let's look at this. This is what I plan to cover today. SWOT analysis. We'll look at it and what SWOT stands for and how we can segment it. First, what does S stand for? S means strength, W means weakness, O means opportunities, and T means threats. Now, this is divided into two internal and external. And what comes to your mind when you hear internal and external? Why are we dividing it into two? Just sit down and relax and let me explain things to you because we are all business management students and this comes into play when we have our own business, when we set up our own business, which most of us have at the back of our mind after going through this particular course, we want to set up our business, some of you already have businesses and you want to look at it, okay, what is SWOT analysis and how does SWOT analysis affect my business? So I'll explain to you. SWOT analysis is something that is peculiar to businesses. It's something that when you look at it internally, it's something that either you have power over or you don't have power over. So when you look at things that are within the control of your business, you look at it internally, which are your strengths, which are your weaknesses. You can also look at it from the angle of um, your staffs, your staffs in the office, the way they behave, are they customer centric, the way they behave. Those are things you have power over. The branding, the way you position your company is positioned outside, the way you attend to customers, the way you're able to give feedback, even if it's criticism that you get from customers, you're able to give them listening ears, your, your market value, your share price, brand recognition. These are things that, in short, your competitive advantage. We'll do a course, I'll do another recording on competitive advantage. Competitive advantage, I tell people, are most of the time, the strength, your strength. So the weakness of your competitors, as you know what competitors are, the weakness of your competitors are your competitive advantage. So you know, okay, maybe you have a coffee shop, for example. Maybe you open a coffee shop and you notice that, okay, the other person sells the same coffee at you. What stands you out? So you look at the coffee shop. Okay, maybe they don't give um, sugar or they don't give, um, they are not less fine. You look at one weakness in which they have and you try to dwell on it or build your business around it and make sure that since they are not offering that, your business is actually offering that, that is a competitive advantage over your competitors. So as we start our market or as we start our businesses or whatever we plan to start, we must always identify our competitive advantage because that gives us an edge over whoever is in the market or whoever is doing this particular business of ours. So if we go through our module, we'll see a video, but I'll not be playing the video today. If I want us, after watching this, we can also look at the video to get more explanation or look at my, to get more explanation or details. Like I tell all students, your module is your best friend. So try and look at your module so that you understand what this is. So strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. The findings of internal audits of critical organizational strengths and weaknesses. The external audits are threats facing the organization. These external audits, these external threats, these external um, things that affect your business, they are things that you as a CEO, you don't have power over. The internal, whatever happens internally, you have power over it. The strength, your weakness, are things that you are, can manage as the owner of this business, are things you can still control that is within your range. But opportunities and threats are things that you can't control. They're not within your reach. So take, for example, Pest analysis. I remember most of you will have heard that word pest. That's political, economic, or social, technology, legal, environment. So this, these things are external. You don't have power over it. Government policies, you don't have power. Over it. So how does this policy, how do they actually affect your business? How do they actually, what does your business stand to? Do they stand to gain anything from any new government policy? Do they not stand to gain anything? Is there anything that they will bring up tomorrow that's going to affect? So that's why we see the opportunities. Are there new, new laws from the government that will come up tomorrow and will actually positively um, affect your business? So maybe tomorrow the government is 
promoting sustainability and you have your business is actually very sustainable you know what you stand to gain as a business person or maybe tomorrow they're saying they don't want a particular thing and that's where your business line is you know what it means or when you look at technology so all these things are things that make up the SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis is actually broad, but we're going to look at it. We're going to narrow it down to the simplest minimum so that you understand what we're talking about. So we're going to look at different things, like I said earlier on. So now we look at SWOT. What comes to your mind when you hear SWOT analysis? S, what comes to your mind when you hear S? What comes to your mind when you hear W? What comes to your mind when you hear O? What comes to your memory? So people will say, oh, external factors, internal factors. Yes. So let's break it down. So strengths. What does your organization do better than others? Ask yourself this question as a CEO. What do you think you do better? What do you think you have? You Maybe you have a restaurant, for example, and you sell allow meat food, or you sell vegan food, or you sell things that you know that the regular store out there don't sell. That is your strength. That is what stands you out from others. That is what you know that, okay, if I invest more in vegan food, oh, people that are vegetarians can say, oh, finally, I have a store close by that I can get my vegan food. I can actually order online, stuff like that. Or you sell maybe a lot of food. People say, oh, I know that this I can trust their food. I'll go there. They don't just sell any health food and stuff like that. So you actually need to know, okay, like I tell people, everybody's not your customer. So you actually need to know, okay, this is the channel. This is where my route is. This is where I want to channel my strength. And this is my strength. This is the strength of my business. So what are your unique selling points? What do you think? Do you have a spice? Do you have, okay, maybe you have a coffee store. Or do you, where do you get, where do you source your coffee from? These things are your strength. If you go above and beyond to source your coffee from a really good place where they actually do cocoa and the rest, you know that you tend to stand out from the regular coffee shop out there. Do you understand? So what do your competitors and customers in your market perceive as your strengths? What do people that are in the market, what do they perceive as your strengths? What do people that are selling maybe vegan food or ala food or are selling curry or any type of meat, what do they think that, ah, why do you think people are always rushing there? And you see your competitors say, oh, there's a spice she uses, I don't understand. Or there's a spice he uses, we don't get it. But that spice makes our food stand out. Or that coffee, they actually, I don't know where they source their coffee from, but that coffee makes it stand out. This particular statement is your strength. So what do you think people actually say? Oh, they are really very customer-centric there. When you go there, you get the best of the best. You get the best food. You get the best, um, the customers are, um, when you get the best food, aside the best food, the staff, they are always smiling. They are always asking you if you're okay, if you need attendance, if you need anything, if you need them to attend to one or two things for you, or you're not happy with anything, is the food okay? Stuff like that. These are what you, so also in terms of strength, what is your organization's competitive edge? What makes you stand out? So all these things, all these things make up your strengths. And as much as possible, you need to make sure that your strength keeps waxing stronger and stronger. You know, see, because I have, because all my customers are very, all my staffs are very customer centric. Oh, we don't have an issue again. You don't want to improve. You don't want to send them for training or stuff. No, you need to always improve because people are learning. People are doing that market research and they are learning about your company. As they are learning about your company, they want to look okay, what can we do to beat these people from this business? So we also look at the other internal factor, which is um, weakness. What do other organizations have or do better than you? Okay, you are doing a business. Oh, you notice that your neighbor is actually selling more than you and you guys are selling the same thing. You people sell the same thing. You sell, maybe you're a chef. You sell takeaway, for example, and your neighbor actually sells better than you. You actually try to know, okay, what is my neighbor doing better than I do? What is she putting? What type of spice? Where does she source it from? Okay, what is she doing better than my organization? What is she doing better than my store? What elements of your business add a little or no value? What do you think in your business, even with all the stress you go through, customers don't even recognize it. They don't see the value is added to your business. You need to recognize that. What do your competitors and customers see as a weakness? What do you think that competitors and customers see as a weakness? Maybe when they come to your shop, the shop is always dirty. Or maybe when they come, um, it takes, instead of 10 minutes, you stay two hours, everybody's nagging, where's my food, where's my food? That's not a good trait. Uh, so stuff like that, that, those are your weaknesses. 
you need to actually identify your weaknesses because one thing is you need to identify these weaknesses. That is only when you can actually work on it and make them work on it so that you don't have it to elevate it and make them your strengths. So work on your weaknesses, work totally on it. Because one thing is, the more your 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 competitors know about your weaknesses, the more they try to, okay, let's see what we can do. She is weak in this part or he is weak in this part. We can actually do this, we can do this to actually overshadow her or sweep her off the market. Now we're going to look at the opportunities. Opportunities, like I said earlier on, we look at pests. What is pests, like I said? Political, economic, social, and technology. Now, pests, what political, economic, social, culture, uh, or technology changes are going to take place and would it be favorable to you? Yes, you need to ask yourself this question. So you're a business person, for example, you're a chef. So you ask yourself one question. Now people use air fryers to make their food so they reduce the amount of oil because everybody's watching cal uh, calories. People do different things. Technologies are coming up. Different technologies are coming up. And you're still using another old method to cook. And this your old method makes your food slower before it gets ready. And maybe people will place an order in like six hours. They are not able to even bring out a pot of things like this. They are not good for your business. So now, when new technology comes out, you look at it, is it favorable to your business? You see air fryers, you save oil. So as against you're going to buy a big, maybe 25 liters of oil for your business with an air fryer, you can see achieve what you're supposed to achieve with granola. You don't even need granola. You just need to put whatever you want to grill, put it in the air fryer and get it. So you are actually spending less. With technology, you're spending less and everything. You don't have people complaining of, oh, the calories are too much. I can't eat your food. So political, like I said earlier, sustainability. You may be doing things that have, everybody is looking at the sustainable environment now. Governments are promoting it. Now, what type of business do you do? So if you look at the business that you do, basically, you can say, okay, this business is not sustainable. Now, if a new government comes into power and they are off, their first agenda is sustainable. Every business that is not sustainable should close down. What happens to your company? You also need to look at that. Or if, will it be favorable? So most times this first analysis is either it's favorable or it's not favorable. So you need to be able to know, okay, economically, how, where do I stand to go gain? What do I stand to gain? Okay, in terms of maybe there's war somewhere. Will my business suffer? Okay, maybe there's war in a particular country, for example, and I bring in my raw materials from this country. What happens to my business if I can't bring in more materials? Will I close down my store? These are questions you need to ask yourself as a business person. We also look at threats. Also, before I move to threats, we also look at um, what new innovation, even if you do nails, I have some students that do nails. And nowadays we see a lot of things that are coming up. So you don't even need to wait for your nails to dry for 30 minutes or one hour for your nails to dry or something. There are things, there are even new nail polish that once you put it in your nails, as good. New technologies are coming up. If you don't go with that wave, people will not, if they see that, oh, we are not going with this wave, they tend to run to the place that, okay, within five minutes, I know I can get my nails done and I'm out and my nails are intact. I'm going to the other shop that I have to wait for three hours so I can just get the nails done. So you need to look at it and see, okay, yes. So as you're developing, even when we use our phones, have you thought of it? When you use your phone, you see that our phones that keep developing it, or even they will say update your iOS because they are updating technologically why they can't stay behind. Even when you use your iPhone, your Samsung, they are doing new things. They are trying to keep up with technology because they are doing most companies, every company carries, not most, all companies carry a source analysis. You do your market research, know what is what is happening in the economy, know what is happening in the market, know what people want. Now we'll look at threats. Threats, what political, economic, social, cultural changes taking place will be unfavorable to you. So now, the opportunities look at the ones that are favorable to you. The threats look at, this one will not be favorable to my business. What do I do? You understand? So we we'll look at the restraints to do. Do you What restraints do you plan to do? Will you face? You understand? What are your competition doing about negative? What is your competition doing that would negatively impact you? So now, for example, like I said earlier, those competitors that you have, what are they doing that you know that ah, with the way these people are going, 
it's going to affect my business because they are far ahead of me, maybe technologically. You need to actually look at this so that you know where you stand. So strengths, listing all the features of the company related to critical success factors. Critical success factors are those strengths, weaknesses that most typically affect our organizational success. This can be measured relative to competition based on facts. So opportunities and threats, managers need to identify the main threats and opportunities that their business face. Every day we need to know, okay, this is what is happening. Do a market research. Oh, what is happening out there? What are people saying? Oh, this is the new social media. This is this. Okay, you know nowadays that even before COVID, we all know that everybody was going tech savvy. Now you know that even with COVID and everything is online. And you're still operating your takeaway business just by the roadside. You've not thought outside the box, can't I sell online? I need to sell online. Do I actually need a shop? Instead of spending money in a shop, why can't I do this online? Do this online. Save cost here and do my, be, uh, let people know my presence online. Build my recognition online. Let people know that, okay, yes, I exist online. That is what we need to think about. So potential factors that will lead to opportunities and threats, economic climate, demographic changes, technology markets, competitive activity, different things will lead to threats that can affect you, different things. Maybe for example, in terms of climate, you know already it's no more winter, it's summer. You know the type of clothes that will, people want to buy. So if you're just stocking your um, store with winter clothes, who will buy it? You need to think about it. If this is summer, people want nice clothes, people want to be free, people don't want winter jacket. You need to actually know, okay, if people, these are, these are the things that people want, this is what I should do for people. So the following, I would like you to actually try this quiz. So you look at it from the following are features of hotel. I would like if you can do this and send it to me via email, I'll be really, really, really impressed. So the following are features of an hotel with each of these features in the appropriate box. So you look at new dining facilities. Where does new dining facilities fall on there? Is it internal? And if it's internal, is it your strength, is it your strength or is it your weakness? You look at new full service hotel being built close by. Hmm, you should know that should look that looks like a threat, depending on the angle you're looking at it from. Okay. New football stadium being built downtown. Most of these things can actually be look, looked at from the angle of threats, opportunities, depending on what you do. High turnover amongst hotel staff. You know what high turnover is? When you have most people resigning, that is not good for any business. That is not good. I tell people it is more expensive to recruit staff than to recruit staff regularly than to retain them and give them what they want. Because before you catch up with the new ones, the new ones actually catch up with where the old staff left. Okay, this new old staff, oh, don't worry, she can go. She has been my chef. She wants more increase. I I'm, not, I'm not ready to compromise. I don't have the money to give her. Let her go. I'll get another person. Yes, I know you get another person. There are other chefs outside. But the thing is, the time you used to train that person, the time the person will get accustomed to your system, the person may even get bored and say, no, I can't do this. I want to resign. So before you know this, you actually tell on your business. Because... Your customers will say, ah, why are you changing your chair? Because the truth is, no matter what happens, when it comes to service delivery, it's always different. So you actually look at low unemployment rates, highly experienced and successful general manager appointment, appointed, guest room facilities are in poor condition. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Airline adding new routes to local airports. What does that mean? So if you want, we can just, let's just do it together. But you can also try it and see before you go to the next slide. So we look at new dining facilities, highly experienced and successful general manager appointed. That's how your strength. Because when you have experienced hires as your staff, you should know what it means for your business. You know your business will be an eye flyer. You know where your business will be stated. Then when you have a new dining facilities, customers are well, I like your sets, I like this, I like this. People will really love to eat with that type of set plate dish and the rest. Weakness, high employee turnover amongst hotels that people are resigning. That is not good at all. Like I said before, guest rooms are in poor condition. 
if I know that when I get to your guest room or I lodge in your hotel, uh, maybe there are bed box, there are bed box there. Will I want to come there? No. So opportunities, new football stadium being built is an opportunity. Airline adding new routes to local airports is an opportunity for you. So there are more new lines to do. So you imagine if you have a shop in the airport, you know what that is, more customers. So threats, new full full service hotel being built close by. That means you have an hotel and there's another one that has more equipment than you have. You know that's a threat for your business. So you need to know that you need to up your game as a business person. So low unemployment rates, you know what that means. So we can also look at um, SWOT analysis from Tesco and see how Tesco has also analyzed their own. So business environment, also we look at what is business environment, internal factors, organizational culture, organizational structure, organizational functions, and like I said, pest analysis. So what challenges are faced by the modern business? What's the modern business? Some of the main biggest challenges are globalization, latest technologies, change management, security issues in maintaining online existence. These are things that actually affect the company. So basically, we're going to, this this um topics I've spoken about, they are really, really broad. So I'll be talking about personal analysis in my next video. Personal analysis is an external factor and how they come into play and how they affect your business and what you can do as a business person to help your business grow. So SWOT analysis, SWOT analysis, we've spoken about it today. Personal, we also talk about it. Business environment, organizational structure, how you structure your environment, how you structure your organization, sorry. This will also show a lot to your customers out there. So I hope with this little video that I've done today, I hope with this little video I've done today, you're able to understand what SWOT analysis is. And when somebody asks you, okay, what's the strength of your business? You'll be able to say, oh, the strength of my business, strength, or oh, what's the SWOT, SWOT analysis of your business? So you'll be able to know strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you know how they come into play in your organization. Please, like I said, if you have any question or you're doing your assignment, you have any question, please do not hesitate to contact me at ejmr at scholarschool.ac.uk. Thank you very much and do have a lovely day. Bye.